service, and I tell you, this has got to be one of my favorite things in the entire year. You know, of all the craziness that goes on at Christmas with our culture and shopping and everything, this is the time where we really settle down, just take a deep breath, and delve on what Christmas really is, the birth of our Savior. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So we want to welcome you here tonight, and uh, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. I thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. That your presence, your Holy Spirit is amongst us, and we are grateful for that. So I pray, Lord, that as we partake in this service and sing and read the scriptures and light candles, that you would be glorified in it. And we thank you, Lord, for loving us so very, very much. So bless us all, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a program, you can follow along here, but first we're going to start with a responsive reading and some singing, some music. We're going to read the Christmas story, and then we're all going to get together and light candles all around this auditorium like we all do. So right now, we'll, I'll turn it over to Ron for our responsive reading. Good evening, and Merry Christmas to you. If you would, uh, let's stand, and we'll do a responsive reading together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. O come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was light, and that light was the light of men. O come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. O come, let us adore him. Christ is Lord. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Thank you. Be seated. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's sing joy to the world.
we uh, come to, together tonight, if you want to give the opportunity to take communion, if you would like to, as a family. Um, and I'd like to go ahead and read a couple of scripture that would uh, bring us closer to what the Lord has done for us. In the book of Matthew, I wanted to read verse, chapter 1, verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Is a, that is a, a great statement, because without Jesus, we will not be saved. We will not even need to meet you together. In Matthew chapter 5. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciple came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is a real special time of the year to remember Jesus. We know that Jesus came to this world as a baby, but we know that in the second time he'll come back, he will be with power and glory. And we look forward for that. Just the same as as in the old, when Jesus came to his world as a baby, people were looking for him to arrive. And we look for him in the future. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you sent your son to this earth for us, for us so that we can be rescued from our sins. As we get here at your table, Thank you for what Jesus has done. Help us together, Lord, to remember the special every day throughout the year. We thank you those for those who have come. In Jesus' name.
what we do every year. We're going to read the Christmas account of the birth of Jesus. You know, I always think about this time, and um, I think we read this every year. You know, but it never gets old. It never gets old. And the reason it doesn't get old is because it's the story and the account of the greatest thing that ever happened to humankind. It's the greatest thing that could possibly could have happened to us. That God would love us so much that he would send his son to this earth to live and to teach amongst us. And then to die so that we might be saved for eternity. And not only that he came, but the way he came. You know, he came into this world the way we come into it. By being born. And not only was he born, but he was born in humble circumstances. He didn't come the first time as a majestic king. You know, he was born in a stable to a teenage girl and, and poor family, surrounded by animals and put in a manger. I mean, how much humbler could you have come into this world so that we could all identify that we were, we're not so high and mighty, we're not so low that we can't identify with the life of Jesus and how he came. He became our high priest. And Hebrews teaches that the, he, the priest is, can identify with us as humans. He knows what it feels like to be human. He knows what it's like to laugh. He knows what it's like to have friends. He knows what it's like to hurt. He knows what it's like to be betrayed. And he knows what it feels like to die a physical death. And so this story that we're going to read, this account out of Matthew and Luke, is extremely important to us because this is the avenue of, that God chose to bring his son into this world. And every year when I read this, I can't help but thinking, you know, this story has been read to millions of people over 2,000 years. You know, people of every race and every you know, nationality. This account has been read in castles, you know, amongst kings and powerful people. And it's been read to the poorest people in the world, people that are homeless, people who are meeting maybe tonight and tomorrow under a tree somewhere in Africa, reading the story of Christ coming into this world. <coughs> And there are some people reading this story this weekend who are reading it at the risk of their lives. Because there are places in this world where it's a crime and even a dangerous capital offense to claim Christ as Savior and to have anything to do with him. So how blessed we are that we can read this account in freedom. But we need to remember those people, our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world that are not so fortunate. But the story of Jesus is no less powerful. Whatever age it's read, whatever circumstances, whoever it's read to, the power is still the same. The power of God loving his people and sending his son. So I'll just read it in, in chronological order from the books of Matthew and Luke, the gospel accounts. Here's what the Bible says. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. 
But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about them, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now, after Jesus had been born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up. He took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Now when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. And he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, and he said, Get up, 
take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So it was fulfilled what was said to the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, how we are grateful for this account of Jesus coming to this earth. And Father, ever since he was born, it seems like people have tried to kill him and put him away and ignore him or whatever. I pray, Father, that we who are followers of Christ would be bold to proclaim this good news wherever we go. And Lord, none of us in this room were there when Jesus was born in Bethlehem a couple thousand years ago. But I am so grateful, Lord, that there is not one of us here today who will miss his second coming. Everyone will be involved in it. Everyone will acknowledge him as Lord. He won't be coming as a baby. Nobody will be chasing him down. He'll be coming back as King of King and Lord of Lords, and every knee will bow. I pray, Father, that all of us here know Christ as Savior. And we look forward to that day when we will see you face to face. And we can thank you personally for the love that you show us every day and for the salvation that you paid with your own blood on that cross. So be with us, Father, and bless us, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for our Savior, Jesus. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. What we're going to do now is we're going to light the candles. There's candles here for everyone. What I'm going to ask you to do is is stand up and go around that back wall and come down this wall. Hunter will give you a candle, and then you'll light it off of my candle. And while we're doing that, uh, David and Sylvia will be leading us in O Holy, uh, o Holy Night. So we'll do that right now.
it amazing how one person holding one candle, it's not too bright, but when you get a bunch of people, it just shines out and fills up the whole room with light. And that's what we're called to do as Christians, to be the light of the world. The world's a dark place sometimes. And the Lord is depending on us to let our light shine everywhere we go. What we do right now, if you've been here before, you know what happens. But if you're not, I'm going to tell you. We open it up to anybody that would like to say anything right now in the way of praise to the Lord or thanksgiving to whatever, whatever's on your heart. We open up right now for you to say whatever you'd like to say at this Christmas Eve. So the floor is open. say praise to Brady as the uh, Lord come to his heart and come baptize. Amen. Praise God. Taylor said that I'm thankful that I can still see the Sabine, even though I can't be there in person. Amen. Oh. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't catch that, you know, Sandy is streaming our service all around the world right now. And Tyler Crowder just sent a word to her that you know, he's watching and feels a part of it. And he is a part of us. So thank you, Sandy, for making that possible. That's neat. I wanted to say I'm grateful for you. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to say I'm grateful that you know, I can see people over there. It's been a while since we've had so many people that we've had to fly over into that part of the room. Amen. Amen. Right. Anybody else? Day. Amen. I'm glad you're here too. Paul, I'd like to say that I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be with my church family tonight and to be with my family um, of both tomorrow and um, mm -hmm. just uh, keep uh, Stuart and Katie in our prayers and we will look forward to uh, when we have those new grandbabies to report. Amen. appreciate that. <laughs> I think I'm the one that's blessed. I, I know I am. So, but thank you. I want to thank y'all for a great family. Amen. You know, for what you give us. Not just on special occasions, but on many occasions. Right. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, I want to 
say I'm thankful for all of you. I, I've said it every year. I think I, I, I really am the, the richest man in the world. I have a wonderful wife that loves me, family, and I appreciate them all. And I have a church family that loves me and puts up with me sometimes. But I'm especially grateful, I guess we all are, for Jesus. And I got to thinking about it today. You know, a month ago, we lost two of our dear people here. You know, Lonnie Crane and Peggy Epling. And I'm thankful because of what Jesus did that we'll see him again. It all started with Christmas. It started with Christmas, Jesus coming and growing up and teaching, and it ended with his resurrection. And because of that, you know, people we've lost, it's not goodbye, it's just see you later. And I'm, God, I, I thank you for that. I praise you for it. I'm in awe of it. You're blessed. Well, if there's no one else, what we'll do now is we're going to sing just the one verse, the first verse of Silent Night, and then we will blow out our candles. There's a box out in the foyer that you can place your candles in. Have to make sure it's out, and, um, and we'll just call it a yeah. Fire is good when it's contained, <laughs> but we want our fire for the Lord to burn everywhere. Amen. Okay. So, where's David? Will you start us off on? Silent night. Silent night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.